joyful voices echoed from all sides, and the newlyweds Oswald and Stella were happy. The bride seemed to radiate with joy as she was marrying the man she was sure she had always loved. Despite the twelve-year age difference, Stella got along very well with Oswald. He didn't treat her like a silly little girl, emphasizing his superiority in life experience and knowledge. The man looked tenderly at his young wife, and both emanated happiness. The master of ceremonies announced the second break, and the guests dispersed in different directions. Most went outside to get some fresh air. The summer turned out to be very hot, and only the air conditioners in the restaurant banquet hall saved them from the heat. Stella went to the ladies' room, then went upstairs, noticing her father and the groom whispering to each other, heading towards the administrative office on the second floor. The bride looked at them in surprise and tiptoeing, followed the men, smiling to herself how she would scare them when she suddenly burst out. Such a childish prank amused her, but today, on her wedding day, she wanted to play a little, so that later her husband would fondly recall the impression her joke made on him. After waiting for her father and Oswald to enter the room, Stella crept up slowly and prepared to slam the door noisily when she saw Oswald handing a folder to her father. Here, mister. Walker, I've prepared everything, but are you sure you're doing the right thing? Of course. Stella is my only heiress, but she is too young and inexperienced. I need a reliable person to look after her. Oswald and Mr. Walker signed the papers, after which the groom put the folder in his briefcase and asked one of his subordinates to deliver it to a secure place for safekeeping. Stella's eyes darkened. What was this? What deal were they talking about that neither her father nor the groom had mentioned to her? Deciding she had had enough of all these secrets, the girl went downstairs, walked into the ladies' room, grabbed her purse, and rushed out to hail a taxi. None of the guests, except her friend Meg, noticed that the bride had just left her own wedding through the back door. No one knew that Meg had never believed until the last moment that Stella and Oswald would get married. As the couple returned from the marriage palace, the friend whispered, Are you really marrying him? After he swore his love to me and spent every night with me. Oswald and Mr. Walker searched the entire restaurant in vain for Stella. She seemed to have vanished into thin air. In the ladies' room, the puzzled groom found a strange note written by Stella's hand I know the truth, and I don't want to see you anymore. Goodbye forever next to it, lay the abandoned white gold engagement ring adorned with small sapphires the bride's favorite stones. They had chosen this ring together from a wedding catalog. There was no signature, but Oswald had often read notes that the girl left for him in various places when they had just started dating, so he could recognize his almost wife's handwriting among thousands. Showing the note to his father-in-law, the man pondered. What do we do now he didn't realize he was speaking aloud? Mr. Walker slumped in his wide armchair, his face turning purple, struggling to breathe. What's wrong with you, Oswald rushed to him. There was no answer, and Mr. Walker collapsed into the arms of his son-in-law. Call a doctor immediately, he needs help, the man is unwell. While everyone was busy providing assistance, Stella arrived at her apartment, which her father had given her the year she enrolled in a prestigious university. Anger and disappointment drove her forward, not allowing her to think about the consequences of her actions. The girl was determined to teach both her father and her fiancé lesson for their betrayal and strange deals behind her back. At the airport, attention was drawn to a young woman who was asking to buy a ticket for any flight from the country to Europe. I don't care where, I just need to leave urgently, I don't want to stay here, she exclaimed. Well, all right, the attendant responded, surprised. She checked the flights and informed her, there's a flight to London in four hours. Okay, book it, Stella said, pulling out her card to pay for the ticket. She proceeded to the waiting area, checked in for the flight, and waited to leave the country as far and as soon as possible. Indeed, this wasn't how she imagined her family life to be. When they first met, Stella was only 17 years old. Oswald came into her father's company, proved himself well at work, and soon Mr. 
Walker himself offered the promising employee to become his partner. He agreed, and it was decided to celebrate in a restaurant where Mr. Walker also invited his only daughter Stella, who by that time had enrolled in a linguistics and translation program. She had graduated from a language high school, and even before enrolling, she was fluent in three foreign languages, as she often traveled with her parents on tours to different countries. She easily grasped and quickly mastered basic grammar and vocabulary to communicate with representatives of other cultures. Stella's mother noticed her daughter's language abilities and encouraged her to pursue them, choosing immersion in the language environment as the method of learning. They always went on vacations to the chosen country, where they spent about a week or more, if time allowed, and Stella was eager to learn as many languages as possible. However, they had to forget about the trips when they were informed of terrible news Stella's mother was diagnosed with adrenal cancer. The disease progressed rapidly, and the flourishing, beautiful woman was gone within six months. Mr. Walker took a long time to recover from his wife's death and promised to fulfill his paternal duty by giving his daughter away in marriage since her mother didn't have the chance to witness it. My Patricia in heaven, at least, will know that I fulfilled my paternal duty, gave Stella in marriage, and when we have grandchildren, she will rejoice. Patricia always dreamed of seeing Stella start a family and become a mother. Therefore, noticing how Stella was dating Oswald, looking at each other with interest, he didn't interfere with or object to their relationship. Another person in his place might have said that a 12-year age difference was significant, but Stella's father didn't do anything like that. He trusted his partner, believed in his honesty, and saw no reason to interfere with their relationship. Oswald took care of the girl beautifully, meeting her after school, taking her to restaurants, exhibitions, and theaters. He took the trouble to find out Stella's preferences better and always guessed the right gift, whether it was flowers, jewelry, or desserts. Sometimes Stella would say to him in all seriousness, I have a feeling that you can do magic. How do you know that I love freesias and orchids? When he gave her a beautiful necklace adorned with hematite, Stella was even speechless. I never thought such a stone would look so beautiful, she said. She loved transparent stones, and the girl happily wore unusual jewelry that attracted the attention of others. When Oswald first asked for permission to kiss her, Stella was taken aback. She hadn't thought he cared so much about her that he would ask for permission. And he was a man so much older than her. She liked that he never allowed himself to speak rudely in her presence, as she noticed with other couples, never touched her without consent, and never discussed other people. This was a sign of a real man, which distinguished Oswald favorably from some of her acquaintances. If you want to know what someone said, go and ask the person you're interested in Oswald, would usually reply. It was very exciting when he proposed to her in a small cozy restaurant, presenting a bouquet with a ring hidden in one of the flowers. Three years had passed since Stella fled abroad. She lived well and hardly denied herself anything. Sometimes she longed to call home, to talk to her father, but she didn't, scolding herself for a moment of weakness. However, Stella was surprised by her father's silence after all, she was still his only daughter. Why didn't he remember her or call her even once? Was she right about him, and her father simply traded her for the super successful and respectable Oswald? When Stella discovered that her savings and earnings had significantly decreased, she decided to return home. And here she was, standing in front of her father's house, which somehow seemed unattractive and gray to her, although she used to consider it a model of style. Entering the hallway, the girl encountered a stranger woman who looked at her with surprise. Excuse me, who are you? The stranger had a slight foreign accent in her speech. What do you mean, who am I? Where's my dad, Stella asked indignantly, heading towards her father's study. Dad, the woman froze. So, you're Mr. Walker's daughter, Miss Stella. How much longer? Can I decide where I'm going in my own house? I'm asking again, where's my dad? Why is everything different here? Did dad remarry? Who is she? And who are you, Stella, folding her arms across her chest, gave the stranger a disdainful look. 
I'm sorry, Miss Walker. You've been away for a long time and apparently you don't know yet. What don't I know for the first time? Concern appeared in the girl's voice. Your father died of a heart attack two days after you left. I'm sorry, we couldn't reach you. Stella sank weakly onto the steps leading to the second floor. Dad. Dad died when I left, she asked in a wooden voice. Where was he buried? Next to your mother's grave. Please accept my condolences again. Stella jumped up and ran to the car parked in the garage. Wiping away her tears on the way, she rushed towards the city cemetery. Stella hadn't been to her mother's grave for a long time, and now she would have to go there to ask her father for forgiveness. Standing over the black granite slab, the girl whispered quietly, Hello, Daddy. Forgive me. It's all my fault. If not for my stupid antics, you would still be alive. I knew that after Mom's death you only held on for me, and I betrayed you. I knew you had a weak heart, but still I betrayed you. Leaning down, she pressed her fingers to her lips and placed a kiss on the cold tombstone. I always knew you loved me, but I didn't want to admit it. You always did what I wanted. I'll never forget that. I promise to become better to honor your name. Returning home, Stella summoned the housekeeper, Mrs. White, who greeted her first. After listening to the young Harris, she advised, you better consult the board of directors of your father's company. As far as I know, your husband, Mr. Roberts, is now handling all the matters there. It can't be. Stella jumped up excitedly and started pacing around the room. Oswald? What's he got to do with this? He's just my father's partner. After dismissing the housekeeper, Stella pondered for a moment then called her father's former advisor. Good day. I would like to discuss matters regarding my father's inheritance, Mr. Francis Walker. When can we meet? I understand everything, Miss Walker, but it's not that simple. Your father had a contract with Mr. Roberts. Earlier than the will was announced, according to the terms of the latter document, all his movable and immovable property passes to you as the sole heir, but nothing is said about his accounts and assets. Therefore, all questions regarding financial matters and company management need to be discussed only with Mr. Roberts. So, I'll have to meet with him, Stella said thoughtfully. She didn't like the prospect, but there was nowhere to escape. After all, Oswald was still her husband. For some reason, he hadn't divorced her after her escape, although he could have easily done so. So, he must still have some feelings for her. Stella wasn't accustomed to tormenting herself with unanswered questions, therefore she decided to show up at her late father's company office the same day. Oswald couldn't believe his eyes when he saw Stella before him. She stood there with a fiery face, demanding angrily, So you managed to get married. Give me back my inheritance. The man couldn't take his eyes off her and whispered quietly but mockingly, well, hello, dear. How are you? Long time no see. I said give me back my inheritance, Stella stubbornly repeated, refusing to look Oswald in the eyes. You'll come back to me, become my proper wife, and then you can expect me to give everything back to you. Is that so? I see. Stella abruptly turned and left his office, nearly overturning the desk with papers. You know where to find me, Oswald called after her and returned to his office under the curious gaze of his subordinates. In the evening, he ordered a festive dinner of Stella's favorite dishes and waited for her. The table was adorned with fragrant multicolored freesias, the smell of which even gave him a slight headache. Soon the door opened, and Stella appeared in the doorway, looking less determined than during the day. She shyly glanced at her husband and noted that he had arranged everything as it used to be in the happy times. Freesius, and it smells so delicious. You surely know what I like. Of course come in, make yourself comfortable. Oswald approached Stella and helped her take off her summer coat. He noted to himself that the girl had become more beautiful, more mature, and more sensual. As he touched her skin, 
he felt an electric impulse run through his hand, making him slightly shiver. Let's have dinner first, Oswald suggested in his easy, relaxed manner. After a dinner that passed in complete silence, they finally turned to each other. What am I supposed to make of this Stella pounced on Oswald? You now own Dad's company, but what about me? I'm his daughter, and you've ousted me. Stella, you don't know some aspects of our agreement, Oswald spoke up. He stood up and lit a cigarette, staring out the window. So explain it to me, the girl demanded, settling more comfortably on the wide sofa. When your father offered me to become his partner, I didn't even think about marriage or family relations, but after meeting you, something clicked in my head. I couldn't even concentrate on work you were on my mind all the time. Oswald sighed and looked at Stella. Then competitors started attacking the company. I managed to defend our interests, but Mr. Walker decided that I should take on crisis management. In short, it was his idea to sign a contract stating that in case of anything, his company goes under my trusteeship. I'm not the owner, I'm just the manager but a manager with a voice, and I decide what to do up to the sale and liquidation. It was your late father's will. If you want, I'll return the company to you, but on one condition you're my wife, and I want it to stay that way, Oswald explained. So you want to strike a deal with me marital duties in exchange for the company, Stella acidly remarked. That sounds quite crude and vulgar, but you could put it that way Oswald agreed with her. I waited for three years for you to appear. Granted, my hope was faint. You could have filed for divorce while being abroad, but you didn't. I began to think that maybe things weren't so bad after all. Kneeling before Stella, the man spoke, I love you. I can't imagine voluntarily giving you up. Let's give each other a chance. Let's have a normal family with kids with family traditions. What about the documents you and your father signed on the wedding day? Stella asked mockingly. Do you have an explanation for that too? On the wedding day, Oswald's eyebrows shot up. Yes, the lawyers prepared the documents precisely on that day and brought them straight to the banquet hall. We signed them and went on celebrating. Oh my God, is that true hope flickered on Stella's face, hoping that everything Oswald said turned out to be true. So Dad wasn't selling me to you. He made an agreement with you to oversee the company and everything. No, he wasn't selling you, Oswald chuckled. How could one sell their own daughter? No, of course not. He just realized you had no experience in business and wanted to entrust his baby to someone more experienced, and I became his partner after he suggested it. Stella, I've always loved only you from the very first moment we met. Still kneeling, Oswald pulled out an elegant crimson velvet box from his pocket and opened it. Inside was the same ring Stella left on the table on their wedding day when she ran away from her husband. Carefully sliding the ring onto her ring finger, the man whispered, So, shall we start over? Stella didn't answer, she just leaned into him. Oswald jumped up, picked up his wife, and carried her to the bedroom. Stella couldn't even remember how long she slept after the first night with her husband. Feeling the bed and not finding Oswald beside her, Stella got up and descended the stairs slowly. She was met with a strange sight, her husband sitting opposite Meg, her friend, laughing about something. They were so engrossed in conversation that they didn't notice Stella's arrival at once. Meg was the first to jump up. Stella, haven't seen you in ages. You look wonderful. Good morning, dear. How did you sleep? Oswald approached Stella, wanting to kiss her, but she pushed away from her husband. Stella, what's wrong, he asked, surprised. Do you need me to explain? After you two are here chirping away, and after Meg admitted sleeping with you before our wedding. What Oswald turned to his wife's friend in disbelief. She innocently smiled and batted her eyelashes. Stella, where do you get such thoughts about me? It's impossible to even imagine. I am faithful to you. I've had enough of your conspiracy theories, Stella decisively interrupted and ran upstairs to change. Oswald didn't have time to say or do anything before Stella, 
grabbing her belongings, dashed out of the house and got into her car, the one she arrived in yesterday. Don't you ever show up here again, understood angrily shouted Meg at the man. Every time you show up, it turns into a real nightmare. He rushed out of the house and went after Stella, but she managed to run a red light and got lost in the crowded traffic. In the evening, there was a knock on the door of the paternal mansion. Miss White respectfully reported, Mr. Roberts is here for you. Without waiting for her to leave, Oswald entered the office without knocking. We need to talk, he said, looking at the manager. She silently left and closed the door behind her. What can one talk about with a man who doesn't hesitate to sleep with my friend and doesn't miss the opportunity to do the same on the very first day of reconciliation? I'm sickened by your lies. Oswald took out a package and placed it on the table in front of Stella. If you want to leave me, I won't insist otherwise, but I've been honest with you and your father. I've never had any relationship with your friend, although she constantly pursued me and offered intimacy. She's quite skilled at manipulating people, as I've once again witnessed today. Here are the documents stating that from now on, the management of the company is fully transferred into your hands. I'm stepping down from my role as manager and transferring all assets to your control. Sign the papers, and we'll never see each other again. I'll agree to the divorce, and you'll be free as the wind. Well, that's quite the tune Stella replied mockingly, not moving from her seat. I don't see any other way to show that all my intentions were pure Oswald retorted sharply. Do you think I'm a fool who married you only for money? Don't you Stella continued to laugh, but her laughter was uneasy, almost hysterical. Fine. Let's just say we're both sticking to our guns. I'm leaving Oswald calmly open the door and walked out. Stella remained in place. She approached, opened the package and carefully examined everything. So, I was wrong. Tears streamed down her cheeks as she began to dial Oswald's number. There was no answer. Stella continued to call him again and again, but her husband didn't respond. Beside herself with worry, Stella got into her car and drove after Oswald, knowing he wouldn't stay in the city but would return to his cottage outside town. As she approached another turn she noticed flickering lights. Getting closer, she saw an overturned car with Oswald lying in it, covered in blood. No. With cries, Stella began to pull his motionless body from the car, but she lacked the strength. Soon another car stopped nearby, and three guys got out. Seeing Stella crying, they wordlessly began to help extract Oswald, and they succeeded. Six months passed. Stella gazed tenderly at her sleeping husband's face. Wake up, darling. Kiss me. Oswald, with a sleepy smile, reached out to her and gently caressed her swollen belly. How are you, princess, he said, kissing his wife on the ear. Stella laughed in response, feeling incredibly happy. Dear friends, if you liked this story, subscribe to my channel, like it, and share your opinion in the comments. I sincerely wish you all the best, good health, peaceful skies above your head and good mood.